good morning. It's 4.30 in the morning. I got home from Hawaii like three hours ago, but I had to get up because it's shed hunting season. Yeah, I'm a little groggy at the moment. Hawaii was awesome. I actually picked a bunch of access deer sheds there. I brought one home. It's pretty unique. It's like this like spike looking thing. My, my luggage didn't show up, so I'm a little short on gear right now. And I kind of had to piece and part some things together to go shed hunt today. Super excited. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> All right, and I am done shed hunting for the day. <laughs> I uh, just made it back to the truck, and I figured I would not abuse your attention spans by showing you a bunch of hiking and slogging around in deep snow footage because that's all that I did today. I uh, hiked around for 12 straight hours, didn't turn a single shed up. So with shed hunting, there's a lot of really kind of interesting pieces of gear that I take with me that's a lot different than normal hunting related gear. So I'm just going to dive into some of those gear items that I take shed hunting. First up is the Stone Glacier Solo 3300 backpack. So on this pack, uh, you can order these separately, but they're called auto lock buckles. These guys, and they have a cam system inside of them that when you tighten them, uh, they have about a 200 pound uh, breaking strength. So that means it takes 200 pounds of like force for these buckles to slip. That is really beneficial and useful for strapping on awkward loads and just not having them get loose over time. Then on my waist belt, I've got a can of bear spray in a FHF gear holster. And this guy, his name is Paul Lewis, founded this company. He's based out of Bozeman, Montana. Um, awesome product. And if I open up this pack, you can see on the inside here, I've got these, these two pockets here and they're called swing out pockets. And they attach here and here, as well as here and here for just more of an internal organization uh, possibilities. And inside these, I've got got one that's got my uh, emergency kit, and the other one's got different camera gear, other emergency kit uh, type stuff. Next up is Northern Lights Snowshoes. Northern Lights makes the lightest snowshoes on the market. These ones I have right here, these are Elites, and they weigh 38 ounces. Um, I've got another pair that are called Honey Badgers. I got them purely for the name. <laughs> they have um, a much more aggressive base on them, so if you're doing more technical, steep stuff, icy conditions, um, they're gonna be better for that. Next up are these micro spikes from Hill Sound, and these attach to the bottom of your boots, and if you're just side hill and going across steep, icy, wet, slippery slopes, uh, or even wet logs, um, these just, man, they, they grip, and you're just not falling as much. Titan strap. And if you're lucky enough to find more than one antler, uh, you can strap them together with this. Electrical tape also works very well. When you find a bunch of antlers, um, they ride so much better on your backpack. It's just easier to strap them onto your backpack if you strap all the antlers together first and then attach them to your backpack. So it's, it's one load instead of like six individual loads. Next, we got this little wire saw. I use this for deadheads and for cutting antlers off of deadheads. Um, it's super light. That's why I use this guy. Every state has different regulations regarding deadheads and different species, so definitely refer to your state's regulations. Walkie-talkie for staying in touch with your buddy if you're shed hunting with a partner. The Black Diamond Whippet, basically the best trekking pole of all time. Next up, instead of a hard, like Nalgene uh, water bottle, I use a soft water bottle. And this is a one liter platypus. And the great thing about these is once they're empty, they're like tiny. They they have no space uh, consequence. So you suddenly have a bunch more room in your backpack. Next up is three pieces of like clothing that I absolutely love. This one's called the Vapor Shake Dry Jacket and it's from Sika Gear and it's the lightest rain jacket they've ever made. It weighs 5.6 ounces for a large, which is stupid light. And it's like that big. I wouldn't recommend it for like Solid bushwhacking or anything, but just for having it in your pack in case you get rained on or the wind's just howling, it's a pretty awesome piece. New sick of pants for this year, they're called Territory Pants. They're super light, really, really breathable. Uh, they're like a casual technical pant. Weight-wise, they're gonna be similar to the Ascent Pants. Definitely wear them in really warm weather. 
This last piece of clothing, this is Sitka's Kelvin Active Jacket. This one's a prototype, that's why it's tan and a solid color. Basically an ultra light, ultra breathable insulation layer. Synthetic insulation, meaning that if it gets wet, synthetic fabrics or fibers, they maintain their heat retention qualities and synthetic also dries really, really quick. You can hike really hard in it, you can wear it, you can sweat in it, uh, it's gonna breathe really, really well. And this piece only weighs, I think 11 ounces. Overall, a really light system for shed hunting. And to wrap it up, uh, I treat all my clothing with, this is called permethrin. Uh, the brand Sawyer makes this spray. It's basically a very low level insecticide. Ticks in the springtime, in the west, in the midwest, in the east, they can be really, really bad. I've walked through spots in Montana where I've literally had to use my trekking pole and like swath the grass in front of me to knock ticks off because I've gotten like 200 on my pants at once. It's absolutely insane. And ticks carry Lyme disease and they're just absolutely disgusting. So you pretty much want to do everything you can to combat those dirty little bastards. You want to really douse your clothing with it and then let it dry. It claims to be effective through six washes and I think it uh, stays on your clothes for like a solid month. It doesn't like instantly repel ticks, but basically if they come in contact with it, um, in my experience, it'll kill them within a couple hours. I've had them like get in my clothing and then I'll find them dead like in my pants the next day. But once it dries, it's basically non-toxic to humans. But if a tick comes in contact with it, uh, bad news bears for him. All right, and that is all the gear that I take with me shed hunting. Uh, short of like my camera, obviously, my uh, gloves, but you know, food. Um, as well as just some layering pieces, which is purely weather dependent. Yeah, shed season just kicked off here in Montana. It's super cold and snowy. It's actually dumping snow right now. It's snowed like a foot in the last probably 24 hours. Antlers just get covered up and there really isn't a whole lot of sense in being out when you can't see and antlers get buried. Like, just doesn't really make sense. So that is the reason I'm inside vlogging right now. But lots more to come. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe. And we'll see you next time.